All right, well, the time has come. We've got to make a decision on our tow rig situation. I've been debating this heavily for the past month. Uh, you know, we've already tried just about every tow rig out there, but we, we've got to decide on what to do. We've got events coming up back to back to back and we need our tow rig situation to be sorted. So it's one less thing to worry about. If you haven't followed along with our little saga here, about a year ago, I bought a 2020 Ford Super Duty to replace the Cummins Swap Ford that I built. And the main goal was reliability, not having to worry about breaking down, not having that added stress on top of these long trips. And ironically, what I was trying to avoid by buying the truck is exactly what happened to us. We broke down nine hours from home, stranded in Louisiana, stuck on the side of the road with the car and the trailer all of our stuff no way to move it nowhere to take it it was an absolute nightmare scenario now fortunately a good samaritan named chris stepped in and uh, let us borrow his truck we got the trailer home all of that but it was an eye-opening experience and because of what we learned throughout all of that between the warranty process and the way these trucks are built and the problems that they have we decided it wasn't really worth keeping that truck any longer fortunately i still had the come and swap for it so we did put that back on the road we got it kind of spruced up to work we've done some trips with it so our option was to either keep that truck continue upgrading it or to start with a different little bit more capable truck out of the box and it was a tough decision let me tell you it was one of the hardest vehicle decisions i think i've ever had to make but we finally made it and uh the exciting thing is the truck that we did decide on as a bucket list truck for me this is a truck i have always always wanted there was always a couple things that kept me from getting one um but the time is now we finally have one hopefully it works out so anyway uh let me show you what we got i'm pretty excited all right guys before we get too deep into today's video i wanted to talk to you about today's video sponsor factor so factor delivers fresh never frozen meals right to your door that are ready in two minutes it is absolutely incredible it has been a straight up game changer in my life it saves so much time in every aspect I mean, this time of year, the events are coming hot and heavy. I mean, literally just about every weekend, we've got some event to go to that we've got to get ready for, we've got to travel to, we've got to do the event, and we got to come back. And in the mix of all that, we still got to keep up with projects here in the shop and around the shop. So it's never ending. The to-do list is very long. And in that to-do list, there is no time for going grocery shopping and doing all that stuff. But with Factor, we get to skip all that. We get the meals delivered right to our door, but then on top of that, they're ready in two minutes. So instead of coming inside, ordering food, and waiting an hour for my takeout, I can make my meal and be ready in two minutes, which means I can eat earlier. I'm eating better, so I feel better and have more energy to get more work done. And I'm saving money on takeout. It is just such a win-win-win scenario. I absolutely love it. I cannot recommend it enough. Fortunately, now Factor is owned by HelloFresh. So whichever one kind of fits your needs, I can get you a discount code either way. Uh, they're both great options. You know, if we have a little more time, we'll order more HelloFresh. If we have a little less time and things are busier, we'll order more Factor. It's really the best of both worlds between those two. We've been able to cut out takeout entirely, which has been a huge money saver, but also I feel a lot better eating real food and not just junk from takeout. So it's been a great change in my life. I would highly recommend trying it out for yourself. If you are interested in trying it out, head to factor75.com or click the link down below and use code TaylorJust50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. It's a great way to try it out, dip your toes in the sand, and just see what you think for yourself. And then go from there. I'm very confident you're going to like it. It's, it's pretty awesome. The meals are delicious. It saves so much time and you save money. I mean, really, what more could you want? So that being said, we've got a lot of work to do, so it's time to get back to it. All right, here it is. This is our new to us fourth gen Mega Cab Cummins Dually. As I said, this has been a bucket list truck for me. I've always thought these things were so cool. Uh, like as baby semi as it gets. You basically have a sleeper. I love how wide they are and how the whole rear bed is the flare because it's a short bed and it's a dually. I've always thought these things were so cool. Um, and they weren't, no, one of them wasn't really in the cards, but we went down the rabbit hole a little bit <laughs> on truck choice. So if we were gonna buy a truck, the idea was to get basically just a base model stick shift Cummins dually because Chris's truck was a tradesman, basically a base model stick shift. It was a short bed single wheel truck, so not ideal for us, but basically that in a, in a dually. However, then Chris, uh, being the enabler that he is, sent me a listing for a mega cab stick shift. And I started thinking about trying to make the mega cab work. There are some things we have to do with the trailer 
to get all the turning radius since there's some sacrifices we have to make but that started me down the path of wanting to get a mega cab truck i've always thought these are so cool and so i started looking and it, we kind of ended up with not really what i was going for from the start but i'm i'm super happy with it man i've only driven this thing an hour and a half but i i feel like you know price point wise and and for what it does and what we do like i feel like this is the perfect truck for us so it's a 2016. one of the neat things is it is the longhorn edition which it is hard to keep up with all these different trucks package names man like this there's the big horn which is the base model it's confusing this is like one of the basically the highest option there's one slightly above this but it's basically the fully loaded deal so it's got like the pearlescent paint which we need to give this thing a much needed bath it's got the you know the chrome strips on uh, the chrome badges and stuff i really like the white and chrome combo it matches the trailer it's got the the better wheels and stuff but the interior is where it really shines so if you go in here we've got this really neat weather with this i don't know stitching or carving into the seats it's definitely a little tacky but the it, it, the seats are the very nice leather these bolsters i mean the bolsters on my 2020 ford truck were far more worn out than these are these are still in really good shape uh it's got the wood grain trim everywhere like real wood grain so neat uh, it's got the full center console so you've got all these little cubbies a little wood cover you've got the dual center console two layers it's got the screen it's got heated and cooled seats heated steering wheel all, all the all the things so the power inverter blah 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 but the mega cab part is what's so cool so a couple years ago i would have thought that a mega cab would be kind of a waste for us but one thing we've noticed on trips is when we have me, Raldo, and Josue in the truck, all three of us, and we're going on a long, week-long trip, you know, we've each got a big luggage bag of clothes and stuff, and I've got my safety gear, my camera equipment. Uh, we end up having to load a lot of baggage stuff in the trailer. With this, we'll now have storage back behind the seats to put a lot of our luggage. So then we'll be able to basically ideally keep all of our luggage inside the truck. I don't ever ride in the back of my own truck. I'm sure I will at some point, but I usually drive the whole way. But Josue always has to sit in the back. This seat is all the way back because it's the easy entry thing. It scoots up when you turn the truck on, but still a ton of room, but the seats recline. You can lean back, like you could almost lay down in this thing. So now Josue is going to be able to stretch his legs out, not be so crammed back here. He's also going to have heated seats. He's got a charger. Um, so more room, all that good stuff. Um, if you fold the seat down, Cubby's back here for storage, which is super nice. So we can put all the stuff that stays with the truck, like a lot of our trailer unhooking and hooking stuff and random stuff like that can all go back in here. Be safe, sound, secured, out of sight, out of mind. Um, it's just so cool. And, well, okay, last thing on the Mega Cabness. This is one of the big reasons, if I'll ever use it for this, you know, remains to be seen. But with the Mega Cab, uh, if you fold the seat down, if you were to fold them both down, you can literally put like an air mattress back here and have essentially a sleeper cab. But there is so much room. <laughs> and I I've always thought that was so cool. That's what makes it feel like a baby semi is you could literally sleep in it. So yeah, that's the gist of it. Basically fully loaded, 2016. So I'm gonna move the Fummins over next to it and we can do kind of a side-by-side -side comparison. See what you guys think firsthand with a side-by-side -side before we hook up to the trailer. The batteries need to be replaced again. Maybe it might just be one of them that needs to be replaced and maybe the other one's like keeping keeping it in there. It's I drove it yesterday, it should be fine. So we'll start with the engine bay because one of the biggest reasons for buying a Cummins truck is that Cummins trucks are easier to work on. You have an inline six, 
versus a V8 turbo diesel, which Dodge is the only one that uses an inline six turbo diesel. So much easier to work on, there's so much more room. And one of the biggest things we realized when that truck broke down was that we'd be better off if it wasn't under warranty because we could just fix it ourselves instead of having to worry about making sure they don't try to void the warranty because we got in there and touched it. We're, we're just car people, we got a trailer full of tools. We'd rather just dive in and work on it. So let me open the hood on this one. So if we're gonna have to work on it, the Cummins truck is the only way. All right, so we'll start with the Fummins. So let me get you up in here. So the Fummins, the whole grill comes up. If you look in here, we do have a decent bit of room over here. The engine is tucked really far under the firewall. I don't know if we'd be able to pull the head in the truck. Um, this area over here is pretty crammed. It's a little tight. Uh, same with the front. Maybe a little overview there. And then this is a 6.7 truck. So this truck's far newer. But if you look, it's really, I mean, almost, I would say, easier to work on. It's probably kind of hard to tell on camera, but being an inline six, you have a lot of open space around the engine. And this is in a chassis that was designed for an inline six. So we've got more room at the front here. It's not tucked as far under the cow. You know, even with these pipes and such, we still got a ton of room around the turbo to get to it. You know, there's not much that's really super buried, which is nice. So that was one of the determining factors for me on buying a fourth gen truck was after looking at Chris's truck side by side with the Fummins, I realized that, you know, the Dodge is really easier to work on. Um, there was more room to access things. So that's engine bay. Now I'll do interior. So this truck is a 2008. So it's a bit more dated, you know. We do have the like 2011 to 2013 King Ranch seats, they are heated and cooled, but you know, the interior needs some love. We need a new steering wheel and stuff. This is our display. This is our little junk tray. We got four cup holders and a little tray there. These trays down on the side. Our climate control, our aux switches. Boom, and then you can see the room back here. So it's not bad, it's not super cramped, but you know, it's pretty upright. It's hot outside, I'm sweating. It's, it is, so. But it's a little tight and it's a little upright. You know, I imagine it's probably hard to sleep back here. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you seem still to be napping. You seem to be able to do it. <laughs> There's nothing else to do. Uh, so yeah, and then we compare this thing. Or you just, this is without the seat wing back. Oh, these seats are nicer too, more comfortable. And then. Beautiful. Oh, dude, this is wild. <laughs> this is so sick. There's so much room. I'm going to have to ride in the back just to <laughs> enjoy the Mega Cab experience. Either way, I want, you know, I want us all to have an easier, more comfortable trip because that makes our race weekends a lot easier. You know, if you compare interiors, you know, this truck's definitely more modern, nicer door panels and stuff. Uh, this one's just a little more basic, a little more plain. Yeah, nothing too crazy. Yeah, so that's the interior on that one. Interior on this one. Um, so yeah, it's a good side by side. You know, from to me, this interior is much nicer. We have, uh, you know, a lot more features. We've got the auto unlock and lock when you just grab the handle type thing. I wonder lengthwise, let's see. I think this is a little further forward by like a foot. So are they? They're about the same length, huh? But I mean, it shows the, the curve of the. Oh, of the bed. Yeah, it's a much more aggressive flare on the on the Mega Cab. The Ford, it's almost just like a fender stuck on a straight flat bed. Interesting little comparison. Seems like different. Yeah. How the grill, like the grill difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the newer Fords aren't like that. The, ho the hood opens, the grill doesn't come up with it. Fortunately, another thing, this truck comes with the puck system. And I thought we were gonna lose a lot of features when we switched to one of these trucks, but we have almost all the same stuff that we liked with the other truck. We have the in-bed lights, which are super nifty when you're hooking up the trailer at night because they're getting in here to all this stuff. You can't see anything without lights. So I didn't even realize these came with those. Pretty stoked on that. We've got the bed backup camera there so we can see the bed which makes it really nice for hooking up by yourself you know versus this truck's got an aftermarket hidden hitch 
um, you know, basically just mounted to the frame rails underneath. So I'm gonna put this truck back, we're gonna put the ball in, and then hook this thing to the trailer and try to get an idea of how far we can turn as is, so we can see how much we need to go offset. We are gonna hang on to this thing until this one proves itself though, that is for sure. Look at this, it came with the brand new OEM ball. Never been used. I gotta see if my, I think it was supposed to have pucks, but they're not in here. Or the, the safety chain hookups. So I gotta see if mine will work. That we kept off the other truck. camera we're yeah, using it i think it's better i think it's better than the ford one the ford one was so green So here's the problem with a short bed and a gooseneck. You start to run out of room real quick and it's easy to bash in your cap corner or bash out your window. So we can extend, basically get a hitch that bolts in there and extends it back. But as you turn, your offset becomes less. So right now, instead of the trailer being 12 inches that way, it'd be 12 inches this way. But still, I mean, imagine a foot would be a lot. I feel like you could turn pretty far before getting into it. We can also get a setup that bolts into the puck system and offsets the ball back five inches. I think between that and an offset hitch, we should be able to get most of the turning radius. Probably measure it and just see.
that offset hitch should be in good shape. I mean, it is, I debated this a lot because again, I've always wanted to make a cab, but I love goosenecks. Like I'm not willing to give up towing a gooseneck and it is a bit of a sacrifice. You have a small bed, you do have to do some stuff to make it work with a short bed. 90% of the driving we do, we wouldn't even get into the cab corners as it is right now. It's just those rare scenarios where you end up in a pickle, you need, I wanna make sure we're able to cut it at least close to 90 degrees. Cause that's one of the big benefits of a gooseneck is you can get into weird places because you can, you know, cut a tight U-turn or whatever without running into the back of the trailer. I don't wanna sacrifice that, but the mega cab, Make a cap, you know? All right, well, we took some measurements, got an idea of how much offset we're gonna need to get the clearance we want. That being said, before we drive it around some more, before we test tow the trailer around, I wanna get this thing cleaned up. It is absolutely filthy. I swear every vehicle I've bought lately has been super dirty and it's kind of a rite of passage to get it cleaned up before we do anything else. So I wanna see what this thing looks like all shined up. So we're gonna get to, uh, get to washing it. One other cool thing we noticed driving around last night is this cargo cam and the rear view cam we can actually look at while we're driving. It drove me nuts that the Ford would not allow you to do that. Like I get the idea of you're gonna be distracted, but it's nice if you are if you got something in the bed to be able to click on it and look and make sure that it's still there and it's not going anywhere without having to come to a stop. So that's pretty neat. Hopefully the hose will make it out here. All right, we pulled this thing in the shop. It is an absolute scorcher out today. It has been for the past few days. Very, very toasty indeed, so might as well clean it in the AC. It's a little tight. Dualies don't fit so great in here, especially with the lift, but there's room. There's enough room. So that being said, cleaned up nice. There is some, you know, like oxidation stuff in the paint. I don't know if you can see it very well. Just a bunch of junk in the paint. So we need to clean that out. Maybe ceramic coat it. Maybe I'll have Shulman do it. I just don't like having people do stuff. I like doing stuff myself. So I'd kind of rather learn how to do it and then be done with it. Um, but yeah, no, it looks way better. Way better cleaned up. Well, so he's working on uh, sticker adhesive removal. These stickers were freaking cooked on there, man. When I went to try to get them off. Uh, you want a razor blade? I'll grab you a razor blade. I'm gonna start cleaning inside the truck. That's my favorite area to clean, you know? like. I'll put off cleaning the exterior of a vehicle, but the inside has to be clean. So that's where I'm at. That's where I'm gonna be. I want it to be nice and clean. So here you go, sir. And get to it.
All right, well, we have done a very, very thorough clean job here. Uh, we even went in the engine bay and wiped all that stuff down, just trying to get us a nice, fresh start. Nice, clean base to start from. It's very satisfying when you get a new vehicle to clean it up. But yeah, got the inside, pressure wash, the floor mats. These are really neat floor mats. Went through and wiped everything down, all the little different surfaces, the little rubber cubby areas, all that stuff. We wanted to get this thing really, really clean, but it's looking pretty good. I am pretty happy with this thing. Love the color combo, it worked out. I like the interior color, so nothing left to it but to do it. Let's uh, take this thing for a little drive. I'll show you how she, uh, how the old girl performs. Missed the 360 cam. That was probably the best part about that truck. That was neat. Yeah. So I've got it in. I gotta figure out what tuner this thing has on it. So three position switch plugs into the OBD port. So as you can see, this thing is super quiet inside, and that was one of the big reasons for deciding on this versus the Fummins. Is the Fummins is just noisy inside. It's got a lot of road noise. Now, one thing that's weird to me about this that I dislike is that it shifts so early. Like, it keeps you at, like, a, we're at 1,100 RPM right now. Which, obviously, if you're not towing a trailer, not a big deal. But, mechanical sympathy me knows that I'm lugging the engine and it bothers me. One of the big reasons for going with this as opposed to the Fummins is high quality, noise, overall comfort. Uh, the newer the trucks got, the better they made them. Now, that's not to say that we couldn't strip the interior out of the Fummins. And, put sound ending in and, and all that stuff, but the newer trucks are just a lot nicer inside. They're a lot quiet. I mean, you hear like we're, the truck's loud with an exhaust and it's like, we don't have to yell at each other. And that's a big, that was a big thing. So when we talked about this in the Fummins video, if you watched that video, a lot of people mentioned the semi wheels as like kind of the culprit of the bad ride quality. But I drove that truck for a bit with the factory 17 inch wheels and it actually got smoother with the semi wheels. Now, now the semi wheels, the added weight, you know, it does kind of bounce the suspension around more, but just the older trucks don't quite ride as well, regardless of what wheels are on it. But really the biggest thing is is the noise, just the, the road noise. When you roll the, roll the windows up in this thing, it becomes silent. So wait, let's roll the windows down. As you can see, it's loud. It's a little exhaust brake. <laughs> it's so cool! <laughs> I love it. Alright, we got our windows back up it's hot. So I think silence, like you said. <laughs> now, we did originally want to get a stick truck. That was the goal after driving Chris's truck back. Two things, two factors there. Factor one, when I drove Chris's truck back up to him, I, it was a long drive, solo drive, and, and I, even without a trailer, I was like, man, Having to shift is getting kind of annoying on this long drive, you know, coming up on traffic, constantly bouncing between fifth and sixth. And I was like, this, I could definitely see how this would add a lot of stress and strain to a, a long trip. That's already like really tiring to do. So there was that. And then also it's just, it's very hard to find a stick shift mega cab. I had found one that was more expensive than this truck, but it was a base model. And it was, uh, it was pretty far away. It was like way out of state. He said it didn't have any rust, kind of looked like it had some rust. So it wasn't, it wasn't like I could find the same truck in a stick shift. I couldn't. So those are the two factors. And with the stick, you've got to get a better clutch anyway. Really probably need to refresh the transmission so that it shifts well. Like you got to do stuff like we have to do with this. Now, the pitfall of these trucks is automatic transmission. We have to address that. I know one of the big things is the valve body. They're they're thin and like crack. So a billet valve body is a big thing. And then good transmission tuning, I think, is important as well. So if you have any insight on that, uh, let me know in the comments below what, what are kind of the ideal things to do to keep these transmissions alive and happy. You know, I'm pretty easy on my stuff, especially towing. You know, even the new truck, I didn't like to romp on it towing. Uh, but you know, I prefer not to get stranded with a broken transmission I'd like to keep it happy and do whatever we got to do to make sure it lives So let me know in the comments below what what should we do to this thing to, to keep it happy and healthy with the gearing that it has 
it being a six speed, we could lock it out at sixth and let it only ride fifth and be at about the same RPM on the highway as we were with the Fummins. Or if we're going faster than that or we're on flat ground or whatever, we can go up to sixth and be at a lower RPM, you know, be cruising down the highway at 16, 1700 RPM, which would be ideal. So that's always something that bugs me. I can't stand having vehicles that are just RPMing like crazy on the highway. So I'm really happy that this has like a, a relatively tall gear compared to my other dualies and a six speed transmission. That's one of the biggest upgrades from the Fummins is the six speed. You know, that that's my biggest gripe. If that, if the Fummins had a really good transmission, I could overlook everything else. But the transmission is just not great. And it's a four speed, so you're just, you like kind of never have the right gear and that's really one of the biggest improvements of the newer trucks is having the, the six-speed transmission there's my girlfriend Chrissy in her CRV we just happened to be driving back at the same time that she's driving home from work that's so funny I'm pretty hyped man like just driving this thing back and a little bit we've driven it around like I really like this thing I mean the time will tell we'll see how it tows the trailer in theory it should definitely be better than the Fummins it's a bigger engine it's a 6.7 liter versus a 5.9 liter six speed transmission and the variable geometry turbo mm -hmm. so it should have a good bit more power for towing than the Fummins does and better gearing options the more capable a tow rig is the, the easier of a time it has towing the less work it is to tow this truck should kind of meet us in the middle between the Fummins and the Super Duty right it should be more capable better performance than the Fummins not as good as the Super Duty, but easier to work on than the Super Duty and not much harder to work on than the Fummins, right? So just kind of a happy medium on both aspects, both when it comes to working on it, simplicity, all of that, and performance. I like it, dude. I like it a lot. It's good. I think it's going to do as well. Yeah, I'm excited to see how it feels towing the trailer. Yes. Power-wise, you know, yes. that's really the big thing. And you'll know, because you yeah. know. Yeah, you're, done a lot of it. You're the one that drives. I mean, the Fummins did fine the last time we towed it, but it just, it's that gearing thing, and, and you're really getting after it yeah. to pull the trailer up to speed with traffic, you know? There's only something that could do it a little easier. That is the new tow rig. I'm pretty stoked on this thing. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. I know everyone's got strong opinions on diesel trucks. They all have pitfalls somewhere, but this at the moment is what I think is the best choice for us in our program. Time will tell, time will tell. So I did want to tow the trailer with it, test tow the trailer. However, it's going to be a little tricky to make that turn back to trailer in without any sort of hitch offset. I think we could do it, but I'm trying to hold off till we get the hitch stuff. I did order the different parts to basically offset the hitch back, give us some more clearance to the cab, so we should in theory be able to turn further. The question is how much further? You know, it's kind of hard to find accurate info and every trailer is a little bit different. So we won't really know till we try it. I'm hoping we can get good turning radius. That is really the big sticking point, And that was something I debated a lot before buying this truck. It is a sacrifice of going to the short bed, but I think it's made up for by the extra room inside for all our stuff when we're going on these week-long trips. So that being said, still more to do. Uh, let me know in the comments what suggestions you have for these trucks. Like I said, we're gonna do some stuff to the transmission, you know, to try, try to keep it happy. Probably retune the transmission, uh, get some better transmission tuning on there, so on and so forth. But if there's anything I'm missing, uh, let me know in the comments below. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, but for now, we are out of time. Pretty excited on the new truck. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I sure hope I'll get to see you next time. Goodbye.